for anyone watching in the future, from the future. I'll share a little bit about my story and how I got here and why I do what I do. The short version is that I played video games for most of my life, super intensely, on and off. Got my first PlayStation when I was four. It was pre-K four graduation. The next year I got a PlayStation two, and then a Game Boy, and then a uh, GameCube, and then an Xbox, and then a computer. My stepdad introduced me to World of Warcraft when I was nine. I was in the fourth grade. I remember it was at the beginning of the school year. And he was really good at, at this is vanilla World of Warcraft, the, the very first expansion of World of Warcraft. It wasn't even an, an expansion, just the base game. And he, if you know anything about vanilla World of Warcraft, there was a PvP system with rankings in it. And it was ranks 1 through rank 14. In order to get to rank 14 or even to like 12, 13, 10 plus, like you had to play, you had to be really fucking, not good, but you had to play all, all the time basically because it was competitive. And you were farming a currency called honor points. So anyway, he was a rank 13 on his little gnome mage. And I remember he came over one day, like very early in, in, in our relationship. And he let me... I was like, what? wow, what are you doing? That looks so cool. And he let me play for a little bit. And I was like, he, his gear was so good that um, he put me in a battleground. And I was just, you know, pressing one button, which is the fireball button, and just like annihilating people in one or two spells. And I was hooked. And I started, a, he got me a subscription, started playing WoW, nine years old, first character, Dwarf Poont. Dwarf PWNT. It was a, it was a dwarf hunter. And I played hunter because I thought it was the coolest thing in the world that you could uh, tame a pet, and like you, the pet would fight for you and stuff, and use the bow and arrow. I thought that was the, the sickest thing ever. Also, the dwarves start in this snowy area called Dunmoro, and the music is so serene, and there's like snow falling, and the trees covered in snow, and it was just like mesmerizing as a little kid um i definitely feel like world of warcraft had this this very mystical profound something larger than life kind of element to it that just ignited the imagination like no other and especially when you're you know a kid who is bored out of your mind in school and just everything seems so mundane you, people don't fucking get you or they're just, they just seem dumb, whatever. It's so, like, this was the perfect answer, a perfect escape, perfect thing to bury myself into. I, I played on and off f for years, came back, started playing again in high school. That made shit almost hit the fan there because I was using it to get away from stuff that I didn't want to confront at the time, like um, being disenchanted with my studies, falling, you know, et cetera. Got over that. Happened again in college. Got over that. Happened again when I got my first job and COVID started and I finally became client facing in my role. And I was like, I realized that it wasn't everything that it, that it was chalked up to be because I, my entire life, the only path that I knew was be smart, get good grades, you know, we'll get good internships. So go to a good school and then get a good job and then figure things. I didn't know what came after that. You know, like I, I always had these nebulous thoughts of, Oh, start a business someday. Uh, you know, once I have some capital and some experience and I know some people all like, then I'll consider starting something or doing something. I don't know how I was oblivious to internet money, so to speak for so long. And to just you know, all these self-starting entrepreneurs that were already, you know, using the internet for digital marketing and, and consulting and things like that. But yeah, COVID started and I was like, fuck, well, this is extremely boring. I have bills to pay and debt to pay off too. Part part of that was moving to DC for the job in the first place and getting embroiled in the party culture. And it's just, you know, the nightlife scene is really hard not to. Well, to some extent, when you live in a place as incredible as DuPont Circle and your favorite bars and clubs and restaurants are a walking distance away. Um, and you're surrounded by a ton of other young people. And so COVID starts and I start playing classic World of Warcraft again. 
I used to play on uh, on private servers back before that was official. Long story short, I know I said initially this was going to be the short version, but played basically did nothing for between like early twenty twenty and mid twenty you know, mid to late twenty twenty one. Besides, do the bare minimum at work, play video games, let the stock vest, you know, grab a paycheck, move back to Miami, so I wasn't even paying rent, saving a ton of money. And eventually wake up November 2021-ish and look in the mirror and I'm like severely underweight, um, 115 pounds, it's like look like emaciated. I've posted the stories on my socials before, uh, looking like a, I just got, I was found on a deserted island or something or held in a solitary confinement facility for a while. And I was like, what the fuck am I doing? This can't go on anymore. And so I started to work out again and get my life in order again. But I this, this was the first time ever after a bout of like video game addiction, so to speak, and pouring myself into video games that I started to really I started to really intensely at, think and write about why it was that I kept coming back. Every single time that I was playing, you know, video games, shit hit the fan, rock bottom moment, so to speak. And I'd get my life in order again, in order, but then I'd eventually come back, even when I had a great gig, even when I was, you know, dating beautiful women and all that stuff. Like what, what kept drawing me back? And then started thinking and writing about that a lot. And then eventually asked myself a couple of questions one day while journaling. I was like, how is it that I can play World of Warcraft for 12, 16, 18 hours a day? seven days a week, for months on end, for years on end, and have a blast, have the time of my life, not have discipline problems, renovation problems, feel a sense of purpose, I feel fulfilled, I have good community, like all these things. It just feels effortless and easy. But when I try to devote myself, uh, also, if you have a question to ask, go, go ahead, ask away if you have questions. I'll continue story. In the interim. So yeah, so why can I play WoW 24-7 for hours on end, have the time of my life, but doing what I think will make me happy and fulfilled in my real life feels like pulling teeth. It feels incredibly, not difficult, like uh, when it actually comes down to following the steps, and but difficult internally. Like I feel a lot of resistance. I can't devote myself to it in the same way. All this bullshit comes up. Procrastination, fear of failure. Self-doubt, self-judgment, like what, what is it? Why can't I approach my life the same way that I approach my favorite video game? Because if I did, I know for a fact that I could do anything that I wanted. I could, like, I've, I've already proven to myself of being an elite World of Warcraft player that if I could approach something like I did WoW, that I could be one of the best people at it in the world. And then, you know, and I also thought about this in terms of the people that I used to play video games with because I, I didn't... I never played casually, ever. I like to be the best at whatever I do. So I would play with really hardcore World of Warcraft players who would dominate the server, basically, and and just crush everything that they did. I, the extremely competitive, extremely, you know, elite, hardcore environment. And I look at them and all of, like, the planning that they do, the, the, the spreadsheets, the theory crafting, the simulation, like, just, they're really fucking smart and capable and hardworking people. And if they understood how to redirect all of that towards their real lives, they, these people would be unstoppable as well. Forget me. I know for a fact that the people that I used to play with could be, you know, millionaires, businessmen, philosophers, writers, artists, like whatever the hell they wanted to be if they could just approach it the same way that they did World of Warcraft. So then the next question I asked myself was, well... How do I bridge the gap between games and real life? Like life is technically like a game. It's this giant, uh, you could call it a spiritual MMORPG, right? An MMORPG is a massively multiplayer online role-playing game. And life is kind of like that. It's a place where you you end up on the planet, you have stuff to learn in this lifetime and a path of ascension and a hero's journey if you want to go on. It is kind of like a game, right? It's kind of like a giant real life MMORPG. So what if I bridged the gap between games and real life and I figured out both for myself and for other people, because I was going to do it for myself anyway, 
but I, this is when I realized that this is a problem that other people face as well, that they're, they pour themselves into video games because their life is just too overwhelming and daunting and they can't approach it the same way. It feels like a chore. They're just existing. They're not living. And I'll get, I'll get more to that in a second. Bridge the gap between games and life. Figure out how to approach real life the same way that we do our favorite video games. Approach World of Warcraft. And for sure, it would be way more gratifying. We'd be way more proficient at whatever we're doing. And I think everyone would agree that we would have no need to play video games anymore if life was, we were able to perceive life as its own magical, awe-inspiring, adventure-packed game that we would want to play all the time and never stop playing. We'd never need a break from it. We'd never need to escape from it the way that we do our real lives into video games. Um, and that's how main character men, my coaching program, was born. Was born out of something that I was doing for myself, a problem that I was solving for myself. How do I embrace my real life and stop escaping into World of Warcraft? And then while I was solving that problem, I realized, hey, I'm sure a lot of people besides myself could benefit from that, from this as well. Um, and that's the thing about, also, if you're, if you're tuning in, you have questions for me about life, about games, about how games pertain to life, about my coaching service, about the deal that we have running until Monday, anything at all. If you, even if you want to troll me, ask away. Ask away. So, the thing that I think a lot of men are hesitant to admit or to acknowledge or to bring to light is that if they're playing video games a lot, if their identity heavily involves or revolves around playing video games or being a gamer. Even if they're playing casually a few hours a week or rather a couple of hours a day, it's probably not as peaches and cream as they make it out to be. It's probably like the, the reason why I think that overall men play video games nowadays is because they're looking for a way to express a certain masculine imperative and a certain calling to, to, to become someone as a man, but they don't know how else to express it. The world is too daunting. The world has told them that it's toxic to be masculine. We've, we've lost touch with cultures and, and traditions going back thousands of years that passed it on this, this ancient wisdom of what it means to be a man, to go on a hero's journey and to to become someone, to become your true self, like who you were always meant to be. Um, we've lost touch with that, the mythology surrounding that as well. And so now you have a bunch of dudes who are told that it's not okay to be a dude um, looking for, for something that will make them feel that sense of self-actualization and fulfillment. A, a sense of transcendence, a sense of going on a hero's journey and becoming a better man, becoming stronger and, and living a life of adventure and, and all that jazz. Something in which they can express their innate warrior spirit, something that allows them to have a cause that they can fight for and a vision for the future that they can realize. And video games are it. They've, they've worked almost too well because it's hard to feel a sense of drive. It's hard to feel a sense of, I need to better my life in this way when you can just log into a video game and feel like you're actually going on an epic quest or adventure and accomplishing real things and growing stronger, even though it's just your character. It, it kind of saps the fire that would otherwise be lit under your ass that would be driving you towards truly building out like an ideal life for yourself. This is why, and I'm sure at some point I'll get some flack for this, but this is why I compare video games to porn. And it's because porn simulates sex. 
video games among simulating you know they'll simulate community and and being in nature and stuff like that but most for the most part like the main thing that video games simulate is fulfillment it's achievement it's self-actualization it's, it's really like a spiritual porn or porn for your soul because it satisfies that gnawing inside of you that quiet desperation that says fuck there's more to life than this and i need to experience it i need to find it i can't stay where i'm at and so when you combine porn with video games you put them together you can basically simulate every aspect of your life without having to actually live it you know and you you can go to work make enough money throw the ball to the kids a, a few times um log on the game yeah or rather you know hang out with the missus here and there then game go to sleep wake up and do it all over again for your entire life and I guess something important to clarify here is that I don't actually think video games are inherently good or bad. Also, if you're tuning in, if you're tuning in, ask away. I'm storytelling in the interim. Um, so I don't actually think video games are inherently good or bad. And I certainly don't judge anyone for playing them. I don't think, I don't believe in, I don't think I need to judge someone in order to disagree with them. And I don't actually, I don't even require uh, that the people that I work with, the men that I work with, quit video games while we work together. But the goal of my, my coaching isn't even to get them to quit video games entirely if that's not something that they want to do. But if you're going to play video games, ideally it's for the right reasons. It, ideally it's not because you're using them to make your life just bearable enough that you need to play video, like ideally you're not playing video games to make your life just bearable enough so that you don't do something crazy, um, I'll leave it at that, right? Like ideally you're playing video games because you genuinely enjoy them as recreation or as a hobby and not because you're so miserable in real life and you, you feel like this isn't it but you don't know what to do about it so you're going to bury yourself into video games um, to make the pain go away or to make life tolerable. You know, if if... If your life is truly going the way that you want it to go and you decide that you have time and energy to play video games, like that's fine. It's your life to live. But my coaching is for the people who, again, everything that my coaching is entirely based on a problem that I was initially solving for myself. Because I know for a fact, I've seen it in the comments and a lot of the content I release, I've seen it in the, the you know the the connections I've made different gaming groups on Facebook I see it everywhere when people actually open up and get real that many people play video games because they fucking hate their lives or because their lives aren't uh, just they're not cutting it you know what I mean they know that there's more to life than what they're currently experiencing but they're so disenchanted and and overwhelmed and frightened and like they're just stuck and video games are a very for many people they're a survival mechanism to put it one way i know they were for me like and, and that that allows me to reframe some of my past with some gratitude because maybe if it wasn't video games for me i would have escaped my my worries and my troubles by doing some engaging in some more harmful activities right but I know that for a lot of men especially, because it's so important for a man to have a sense of purpose in life, a sense of belonging, a sense of like understanding why he's here and what he's trying to accomplish, that you know, a lot of these men that play video games live in quiet desperation. They know that this isn't it, but they're not sure what to do about it. Um, as I once was, that was once me, and so really this main character men is about helping men fully step into the greatness of which they are capable. It's about helping men become the main characters of their own epic real life stories, which they're, every, every single man is totally capable of if they could just understand how to get out of their own way and how to approach life the same way that they do their favorite video games because they've already proven to themselves that they can be that powerful, they can be that relentless, they can operate with no internal friction 
excuse me, when they're playing their favorite video games, they just need to understand how to connect the two, life and games. Is this for everyone? Maybe not. Maybe not. I mean, I think, again, going back to the fact that if you're totally cool with where you're at in life and, and the path that you're on, then that's all good. But I know that there are men out there who play video games because they know that this, this their lives, is not it, but they're not sure what to do about it. And I'm here to tell them and to get them to believe that they already know the answer. They just need to, they need to realize it. That the answer lies in the last place that they ever expected to be, which is in their very experiences playing video games. It's a huge, useful treasure trove of knowledge about themselves and proof to themselves of what they're capable of under the right circumstances. How has your life changed since becoming the main character of your own life? <laughs> Dude, it's... And, and this is, I think, what... Uh, you know, a lot of people, I think... It's easy to, to, to imagine what life is like on the other side of xyz th like a certain thing whether it's starting a business getting a ripped physique like getting a girlfriend just getting to this place where you, you think that you want to be um but it comes with a lot of responsibilities like there a lot of people might get be surprised when they accomplish a goal and all it does is give them more problems the thing is that those problems were better than the problems that they had before you know what i mean like i rather have the problems of um, and the responsibilities of being a business owner and having to like, you know, get clients, deliver results for them, etc. cetera. Um, and the problem of making my life purpose a lucrative pursuit and not just a hobby or a passion project. I'd rather have those problems than the problem of, fuck, I'm stuck in this dead end job that I absolutely despise and I want to swerve into oncoming traffic every day. Like that is a much, a little bit hyperbolic just for, you know, the sake of conversation, but you understand my drift. Like those problems are better problems. So life is, um, life has not necessarily gotten easier is the point that I'm trying to get at. But the, I think eventually you realize that if you truly want to live with agency, if you truly want to live with, as the main character of your own epic story, like look at any, any movie. It's not just a fucking, uh, bed of roses for the main character, right? It, it, it's challenging. At times you might even be facing your own proverbial hell on earth, but you don't ask for the problems to get easier. You ask for them for yourself to get stronger. Um, so I I definitely feel it feels more authentic. I feel more fulfilled. I feel like I'm not just putting up a, a ruse or um, an act and pretending like everything's okay. Like I'm very honest with myself about the reality of my life and the reality of what I want to accomplish and the reality of what it's going to take to get there. What inspired you? <laughs> Thomas, I feel like you're memeing me, which by the way, it feels like yesterday, uh, we were in calculus senior year, uh, playing games on our iPads, but, um, <laughs> what inspired you to step away from the main character path to the role of the inspiration to other main character? Man, is this all part of your main character journey? I feel like there are a lot of things that I've learned and understood from my tens of thousands of hours playing video games, particularly World of Warcraft, that a lot of other men who play video games um, just don't... Yeah, big ups from Mrs. Foyer's class. A lot of men who play video games just don't realize these things. Like, I, I've... They don't realize that if they could bridge that gap between games and real life, that they could, their lives would radically improve. And I don't think a lot of them understand. Like, it's taken me quitting and 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 quitting video games and coming back to video games and doing that like multiple times over and over and learning a bit more each and every time in order to finally understand. Um why that was happening in the first place and what I was actually seeking when I buried myself into video games. Like it's a very long and winding road. I feel like I've finally gotten the the right answers, so to speak, at the end of it. And 
these are answers that I was looking for just for my own benefit. And now that I have them, I might as well share them with other people because I know that there are other people with the same problem that those that, that I could help. It is part of my own journey as the main character, so to speak, because I see millions of other men and this number is only going up, right? Like the, the gaming industry isn't getting any smaller and the metaverse is coming out and then that's going to be a whole other challenge of convincing people that their real lives are actually worth living over uh you know a virtual reality simulation like this this problem is 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 only getting bigger and i the i am like genuinely because i understand where these these dudes are at and i've been there before i would love to help even a few of them realize that like life is worth living that a real life is so much richer and rewarding than anything that a video game could ever provide and i don't want them to end up at the end of their lives 80 years old 90 years old look back over it and realize fuck i pissed it all away because all i did was play video games and i never actually tackled my life in the same manner i never truly grabbed life by the by the balls i was just living vicariously through all these fictional heroes through these virtual characters that i was creating instead of becoming the the man in in all his you know glory his natural birthright that I could have been because I think that that's really going to haunt some people so long winded answer to your question but I haven't actually stepped away from my own path in order to inspire men to 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 discover their own you know what I mean like it is part of my path to lead the way for others with the insights that I've uncovered for myself. The only difference is I'm not hoarding that wisdom anymore. I'm not keeping all the knowledge and all the discovery and all the the improvements that I've made to my own life. I'm not being selfish with it, I guess, or I'm actually going through the trouble of sharing it with people and seeing who I can help with it. And who knows? Like, who knows what else is in the store for me? in terms of like the story of my life i definitely there there are, there are a whole other bunch of other stuff i want to do things i want to learn about people i want to meet places i want to go problems i want to solve beyond just um you know escapism with gaming and helping men who play video games level up in real life so this is kind of just the first leg on a on a very long journey and i don't expect it to, to end for a very long time because i'm not going to retire i don't expect to hit like 65 or 70 and then just plop myself on a beach somewhere and sit pina coladas until i rot and die like no nah, not for me but hopefully that answered your question Also, I'm quite a fan of this live streaming thing because it feels way more authentic and like just free flowing than if I were to rec record a video. Something about it, I don't know. Uh, ask. Let's go. More questions. No more questions. I'm going to give this five more minutes. I know I said that 20 minutes ago. I enjoyed the story time, though. I'll give this like five more minutes if no one asks a question between now and 106.